welcome to this lesson on symmetry of graphs. Um, this should cover the information on the, excuse me, unit two, <laughs> assignment three. Okay. And what we'll be dealing with today is different types of symmetry. When we look at a function, we may want to know, is it symmetric with respect to the x-axis? Is it respect, symmetric with respect to the y-axis? At, or is it symmetric with respect to the origin? Now, it can be um, multiple of these. It could be all of these. It could be none of these. It just depends on what function you're dealing with. Um, it's more simple when we look at the graph to be able to see, but sometimes it's hard um, to graph a relation and make sure that you have all the points, especially, especially when it's one that's pretty complex. So we're going to talk about some algebraic ways to check to see if um, a relation is symmetric in any of these three ways. Okay, now this was pulled directly out of the book, um, and this is how we can tell um, if we want something to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. The way that we can tell that, change my colors, the way that we can tell that is to substitute negative x, y into the equation and simplify it. It says that the result is equivalent to the original. The graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And the reason for that is, notice the y-axis goes up and down. Um, to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis would mean, for example, I'll, I'll show you one, so that maybe we can kind of understand why it is that they're saying this. Okay, here is a graph, even with my ugly drawing, that is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Um, and what that means is that this point here, say this is maybe the point 3, 2. If it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, the point negative 3, 2 should also be on the graph. Notice because they are on opposite sides of the y-axis, the same distance from it. Okay, to have that symmetry, that has to be true. So when we go back down here and we look at a generic point, um, if the point x, y is on the graph, the point negative x, y also has to be on the graph. You have to have that same point, but on the other side of the y-axis in order for it to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So what we are going to do is what they said here. We're going to put a negative x in for all of our x's and, as, and then simplify and see if we get exactly the same relation we start, started with, okay? We are going to substitute negative x to determine um, symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Now, this is a little backwards because when we come down here and we're determining symmetry with respect to the x-axis, we substitute a negative in for our y value. And for the same reason, if we want something to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis, I'm going to come down here, draw us a little picture. Um, let's see, this graph here would be respect symmetric or cut in half by the x-axis. And once again, notice that our point, If this point here is on the graph, I have to have one down here that's on the opposite side of the x-axis. If this were the point, let's say, 2, 3, this would have to be the point 2, negative 3. The only difference between those two points is that one, the y value is positive, and the other, it is negative. So, in order to check for symmetry with respect to the x-axis, we're going to put a negative y into our equation change all the y's to negative y's, and simplify. And now you may be going, I have no idea what you're talking about, lady, but we will do some examples. Okay, if the equation remains unchanged after we do our simplification, then that would be symmetric to the x-axis. Now, symmetry with respect to the origin. Symmetry with respect to the origin Remember when you wrote down your point symmetric with respect to the origin, you changed both values? And that's what we'll do to check for symmetry with respect to the origin. We will substitute a negative x for all of the x's. 
and we'll substitute a negative y for all of the y's. And then we will simplify as much as we can. If we end up with exactly the same equation we started with, then yes, it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay? So this is a little backwards, so make sure you write it down. To, for the y-axis, we're going to sub negative x's. For the x-axis, we're going to sub negative y's and simplify. And for the origin, we will sub both negative x and negative y and simplify. Okay, are you ready to go? Um, please note that these recordings can be paused at any time if you need to stop it. And also fast forward. Okay, let's try this first question. Um, indicate the type of symmetry this equation has. Is it symmetric with respect to the x, the y, or the origin? Now remember, on our previous page, we said that if it's respect to the x-axis, what we were going to do, and these are reversed from those notes, don't get them mixed up, um, I, I mean by order. We're going to substitute a negative y for all of the y's. So what that means is the x will not change, but we're going to put a negative y instead of that positive y. And then we simplify anything that can be simplified. Well, when you square a negative number, what happens? Negative y times negative y becomes positive y, I'm hoping you said. So we get here, when we simplify, still positive y squared. Using our simplification, notice that is exactly the same as our original function after we've simplified. So, yes, this is symmetric with respect to the x axis because when we substituted a negative y for all of our y values and then simplified, we came back to our original equation. Let's test with, for symmetry with respect to the y axis. So this one in blue. Now remember our plan for y axis is to sub negative x for all the x values. And you may be seeing a pattern here. Hmm. When we have a squared there, it's easier for it to be symmetric. Because what happens is here we have a negative x squared, that means negative x times negative x, which becomes a positive number every single time. So we can simplify and write that as just positive x squared plus y squared equals 8, which is exactly our original equation. So yes, <clears throat> this is also with respect to the y-axis, it is symmetric. Last, let's check the origin. So remember our plan for the origin is we have to sub negative x's for all of our x values and negative y for all of our y values and then simplify. So here we go. We're writing down the function, or excuse me, not function, but the equation. The only thing we are changing is we're changing the x's to negative x's and the y's to negative y's. The 8 stayed the same, the squared stayed the same. We simplify. Once again, negative x times negative x is going to be a positive number anyways. So simplified, we would write that as positive x squared. Same goes for our y. Negative y times a negative y would be a positive y anyhow. So simplified way to write it would be a positive y squared equals 8, which also is exactly the same as our original equation. So yes, this is symmetric with respect to the origin. So for this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 8, it is symmetric to the x-axis, the y-axis, and with respect to the origin, um, if we were to graph this, the graph of this function is actually a circle, and if you were to try to graph it, um, my fear and what has happened to me at times when I was not quite as experienced is I didn't plug in enough points and I end up with a faulty graph and then cannot determine the symmetry, which is why I try to stick with the algebraic method. This is what the graph of this function looks like. It's a circle with its center at zero, and you can see it does have symmetry with respect to the x-axis and the y-axis, and with respect to the origin. Okay, so um, I try to play it safe and go with algebra, because the reason I know this